Hi, I'm Eric with Simply Elegant Home Cooking. Today I'm going to show you my recipe for homemade chicken stock. This is one of my favorite recipes. It absolutely blows away what you can buy in the store in that carton. Once you make your own homemade stock, there is truly no going back. It's very easy and inexpensive, so stick around and I'll show you how I do it. So you can use whatever type of chicken pieces you want to make your chicken stock. I prefer using the carcass from roasted chickens. It has a lot of flavor after you roast the chicken and the bones and the leftover pieces that really uh, brings out and enhances the flavor of that roasting process. So be sure to check my link in the description box below uh, to see how to do the roasted chicken. That's a recipe that I absolutely love. I do it all the time. And uh, you know you don't want to let anything go to waste. Uh, when you're done eating the chicken, you can just take the carcass and throw it in a freezer bag. And once you have a couple of them, you're ready to make your stock. So you want to put your chicken pieces or chicken carcass into either a stock pot or a large pot like this one. And I'm going to go in with uh, some cold water. You always want to start with cold water and bring it up slowly. So what I'm going to do as I add that, I'm going to turn on the heat to medium. And we're going to fill this up uh, so the water is just covering the chicken. And we're going to slowly bring this up to just a low simmer. So I should also note while this comes up to temperature, it looks a little cloudy. That's actually just some fat droplets. These carcasses had been in the freezer uh, for a long time. Those are just little small droplets of fat, but don't worry about that at all. Later in the process, I'm going to show you a foolproof method for separating all that fat out of your stock. So it'll yield a really clean, uh, delicious result. So our chicken stock is very close to a simmer. At this point, you want to make sure you don't step away. It doesn't take long at all to go from this point to a boil. We want to make sure that it doesn't boil. As soon as that simmer is reached, we're going to turn the temperature down. And what that's going to do, it's going to prevent that fat from boiling into the stock. If that happens, the result will be greasy. So you want to make sure you watch it. And as soon as that simmer is reached, we'll turn the heat down. So this is exactly what we're looking for, just a very, very gentle simmer. I'm going to stick a thermometer in there and test it. And that's coming right to about 185 or so. That's really what you want. You want between 180, 190 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So at this point, I'm going to turn down the heat and you might have to play around with the heat a little bit, turn it down. Uh, just try to maintain it right around that temperature or right around that very, very low level simmer. And once you reach a gentle simmer like this, you will notice a little bit of foam forms at the top of the stock. You can just go in there with a wire skimmer and just kind of skim as much of that uh, off as you can. So once you're done the skimming process, you can add the vegetables. I like to wait. Some people throw the vegetables right in, in the beginning. It won't really hurt anything. It just makes it a little tougher to do the skimming. So I'm going to go in with an onion. I've just given it a rough chop into quarters. A carrot, two stalks of celery, and I have the leaves intact. There's a lot of flavor there, so be sure you leave that on. And about a handful of Italian parsley. So that's going to cook down. I have this uh, filled a little full, but um, this is going to cook down. The water level will reduce. So we're going to let this go for six hours. Uh, you can get by with four hours, but I like to go a full six. And you'll know when it's ready because the meat will be uh, flavorless. Um, if you taste the meat, there'll be no, uh, no flavor left in it. And lastly, I'm going to go in with just about seven or eight peppercorns and uh, two cloves of garlic that I've peeled. I'm not adding salt. There is a little bit of salt that was on the chicken from when I roasted it. That was seasoned with salt, but you can always add salt later. A lot of times I use my chicken stock in reduction sauces. So if you put a lot of salt in up front, you know, there's no way to get rid of that. If you reduce the sauce, it can become overly salty. So it's good to actually make your chicken stock without a lot of salt. And then when you go to use it, season as you go. Okay, so after six hours, this is how your chicken stock will look. I have added a little bit of water about halfway through the cooking process, which I let that cook down. Uh, you just want to prevent the water level from getting too low. But at this point, after six hours, uh, we should have extracted all the flavor from the chicken. So I'm going to turn the heat off. And what you want to do at this point 
you want to take a strainer such as this one, just a mesh strainer, and get rid of any of the big pieces. You want to fish out as much of this as you can. Uh, you don't need to be too thorough because we're going to be uh, putting this through a fine mesh strainer later in this process, but go ahead and fish out any of the big pieces. So here's how everything should look after you uh, strain out the pieces using that mesh strainer. We have about two and a half liters, that's roughly 10 cups of stock. And this is a very, very concentrated stock we just made. And this is everything we removed from the pot. One thing you can do to test, I'm gonna just grab a piece of this meat and take a bite. And if you do this properly, that chicken should be completely bland. Uh, we've basically taken all the flavor every bit of flavor we have transferred from the chicken and the other ingredients into the stock. So you definitely don't want to try to cook with this. Uh, but if you take a bite and it has no flavor, then you know your stock is actually going to be really, really good. And the next step, this is very, very important. You want to cool your stock as quickly as you can. So I have filled my sink with ice water. And what you want to do, you just want to gently lay your stock pot in. And what that's going to do, it's going to cool this really quickly. That's going to prevent bacteria from forming. If you let it uh, come down very, very slowly to room temperature, that can actually be a breeding ground for bacteria. You don't want to put it into your fridge. If you put it into your refrigerator, uh, there's so much heat, it can actually cause the whole refrigerator temperature to rise too much. So we're going to let this come to room temperature over the course of about 20 minutes or so, and then we're going to put it in the fridge. Okay, so after about 20 minutes, this is cooled enough. It's not quite down to room temperature, but it's pretty close. It's close enough. So I'm going to put the lid on and we're going to just drain this sink. And once that drains, I will put this in the fridge and we're going to let it cool overnight. And so here's what we're left with. This is the next morning after letting this chill overnight. You'll notice all the fat has uh, solidified and risen to the top. And this process of letting it chill before you go to strain it or separate it, that's just going to make it really, really easy. You can just go in there with like a, you know, a spatula or a spoon or whatever you want to use. And you can just very easily uh, take that layer of fat off the top. Okay, so I'm done skimming off the fat. There's a couple little specks in there. Don't worry too much about getting every last bit. Uh, one thing you'll notice, once you do this after your stock has been refrigerated overnight, if you give the pan a shake, you'll notice that's gelatinous. Uh, that's one of the marks of a good stock is that it'll thicken up. That's from all the collagen in the bones and the tissue. So what I'm going to do, we're going to give this a final strain through a fine mesh strainer. I just want to turn on the burner. We don't need to get it hot. We just need to melt it just enough to where that gelatinous quality goes down and it'll be uh, nice and thin. We'll be able to run it through the strainer. So this is what I'm going to use to strain it out. This is a really high quality, uh, very, very fine mesh strainer. If you don't have anything uh, quite this high quality with such a fine mesh, you might just want to use a regular strainer with some cheesecloth. Uh, you just don't want to use uh, something where the holes in the strainer are too big. Too much of that debris will go through and it'll cloud up your stock. So here was the setup that I used. I just put the fine mesh strainer on top of a large drink pitcher, poured the chicken stock through and we have about 10 cups of ultra-concentrated, flavorful chicken stock. This is going to go great in uh, pan sauces, soups, stews, and plenty of other recipes that I do. Many of these recipes will be featuring on this channel over the coming months. Um, this stores uh, very, very easily. All you have to do is put it into glass jars. You can store it for about four or five days in the fridge or about three or four months in the freezer. So the portion of the stock that I'm going to freeze, I've put into these glass jars. Some of it I've reserved for some recipes I'm going to be doing uh, in the near future. Uh, these are going to go into the freezer. Just make sure if you freeze them, make sure you allow about an inch to an inch and a half of space at the top like I did here. If you don't do that, they can actually crack uh, because the stock's going to expand when you freeze it. So allow some space and you can store these for months. Although usually when I make it, it doesn't last that long because I use it in a lot of my cooking. So I hope you enjoyed this recipe. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe. If you subscribe to my channel, you're going to see plenty of applications for using this stock. I use it in so many recipes. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Eric with Simply Elegant Home Cooking, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.